today's episode, we're going to be talking about Clive Davis, the man behind the monster, Pete Diddy. After he revealed uh, his um, they did it with understanding and support and warmth. And um, it really impressed me and continues to impress me. As far as myself is concerned, I was totally straight uh, until through my second marriage. I've got four kids and grandkids. Um, I opened up myself after the failure of my second marriage, never having had anything with a man, to see could I be attracted to the person and not the gender. And I did find that I could be attracted uh, to a man. The focus right now is Sean Cohn because he's a trafficker, most likely because he was victimized by his mentor. Diddy and Clive Davis, have they ever had anything past business because to me they seem to mirror each other behavior wise like they to, to me they both got like that dark energy around them diddy's career has suffered greatly as a result of the government probe and the most recent bombshell in case you missed it clive davis is speaking up and this could spell even more trouble for diddy there have long been whispers of a possible homosexual relationship between Clive and Diddy that started in the early 2000s when industry insiders made suggestions about a covert relationship between the two music moguls that the sort of scandal that had business people whispering behind their hands. But was there any real substance to it or was it all just emmerers and smock? It was with the help of Clive Davis, his mentor. And the further into it all you dig, you realize that Clive Davis came out as gay later on and there's a lot of rumors that him and Diddy were in a relationship throughout this time. This is going to come up over and over and over, just by chance. Clive Davis has been running significant portions of the music industry since our parents were kids listening to music. Responsible for artists like Aretha Franklin, Alicia Keys, The Grateful Dead, then later Usher, Outkast, Pink. But back in the 60s and 70s, like Janis Joplin, Santana, Aerosmith, Pink Floyd, like, come on, read it. Jones specifically claims that they were trying to groom him to do gay stuff, which has long been the talk of the town in the rap industry by people that aren't with it. Diddy allegedly showed him a tape from a secret recording that he just happened to have of, of Jones's idol having gay s some white guy. Now Clyde Davis is an American record producer and music executive. He's an older man. He was born in the 30s, actually 1932. Clive has had a significant impact on the music industry, having worked with numerous iconic artists and being responsible for signing many landmark musicians. He's won five Grammys. He's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So he's been around. In 2013, Clive actually came out as by at this point, he was 80 years old, and he revealed this in his memoir. And you know, there's not a lot of people in 2013 who's just really coming out, and then we've got this 80-year-old guy who's been around a ton of musicians who now announces he's been in a long-term relationship with a man, which I'm all about. In your book, you reveal that you are bisexual. Why did you wait so long, Clive, to make that public? I was only turning to bisexual after my second marriage failed. When the marriage failed uh, in the mid-80s, I opened myself up to the possibility that I could have a relationship with a man, as well as the two that I had with a woman. Now there's a connection between Diddy and Clive. Back when Diddy was young, he was a vodka promoter. He really didn't have much of a career happening, but he wanted to start a record label. When he met Clive, Clive was rather established. So he was 23 and able to convince Clive to take hip hop seriously. And Clive actually funded him and helped Diddy build bad boys. It's actually speculated that Diddy and Clive were in a relationship based on how quickly Diddy's record label bad boys became successful. This person tweeted that Diddy was given his bad boy imprint by Clive Davis, who is openly gay. I mean, he says by but what Diddy had to do for riches is not uncommon for successful black men in entertainment and in politics. All that glitters is not gold. Run your race. Let the next man run his. Interesting. Hmm. Now, a lot of people believe that Diddy is the way that he is. I mean, we've talked about him in countless videos at this point because of how Clive kind of groomed him to be this way. They sacrificed Diddy. They, they, they said, I take this because we ain't, we, we, we can't be involved. But Diddy smart. He filmed every session. So he was five and and freak boy that run uh, Universal Music Group. So he got them on some tapes. 
Now that's why they raiding the house because they got friends in Homeland Security and the feds. And they said, get, get in there and get them tapes from this nigga. He's trying to blackmail us. That's what I believe is going on. Was also a frequent attendee of Clive Davis's renowned pre-Grammy party when some pretty crazy things are said to have happened. Some have claimed that because these gatherings were so chaotic, Puppy picked up some of his dubious habits from these events. On page six, one source was spilled. Puffy is always first, it's almost like a ritual, but look at this sharp-eyed scoop. An insider noted that Did wasn't in the forefront of this year's digital invite photo montage, which naturally got everyone talking and made them speculate that he might have been secretly erased. However, a representative for Clive denied the rumors, stating that Fluffy wasn't scrubbed and that we just refresh the photographs every year. I don't think reality is something that has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how was he was Who was mentored by Clyde Davis. Oh, oh God. And don't tell me that Andre Harrell got touched by Clive Davis too. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and and, and Clive, what I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like, Puff started out as an intern. Yes, he, he was did. throwing parties with Mark Barnes in Washington, D.C. And then he became an intern at Uptown. And he was very, you know, proactive and, 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 and if there's one thing that Sean knows, he knows pop culture. That is true. He knows what's hot. Like, I, cannot, what I cannot take anything away from where he has been extremely effective. Yes. He knows pop culture. Matter of fact, probably knows pop culture better than he knows music. Mm. I never felt like he had a lot of talent in music. Is that fair for me to say? I mean, nobody really cares about him rapping. Right. I didn't know why he did that, but then again, why not do it? They're listening to all these other like artists that you're putting out. Why not be one too and get that extra check? Uh, like the people are buying you know, a brand, why yeah. not take it all the way? I'm not hating on him for getting money. Me either. I'm just hating on the way he got it. And I'm hating on the overall effect of what it's done to not only the artist on his label, the artist that got shelved, the artist that got dropped, not, not only that, but what he did to culture because he made culture like an Andy Warhol painting. And don't get me wrong, Andy Warhol, great artist. Right. But let's keep it a bean. Andy Warhol was pop culture. That's what I, if I were to put a label on Puff, I would say that he's the Andy Warhol of hip hop. The Andy Warhol, okay, okay. I hear you, I hear um, you. And he got smart and he listened to all of his advisors, mostly Clive Davis, and he won. So really what she's saying is that Diddy was Clive's favorite and that's why he was immediately put onto this pedestal at a young age, really no experience, and now he's running everything. Now, Diddy has honored Clive throughout the years, so they still maintain a decent relationship. In 2019 at the Grammys, he was quoted saying that Clive Davis and Arista Records gave him a chance when he was starting Bad Boy Records. He was one of the first industry executives to really believe in him and Diddy, and he's forever grateful for Clive. Bad Boy Entertainment. I named it a bad boy because I wanted to go against the grain. Anytime you go against the grain, they consider you like kind of bad. Nothing negative, nothing like hardcore. Just, I didn't want to be regular. So Clive was ultimately impressed by Diddy's vision and decided to fund his project. He immediately took Diddy under his wing and they became the best of friends. And by best friends, I mean there are rumors that in 1994, Clive forced Diddy to do some intimate things to him to be his, you know, mentee. Well, he got a boss too, and his boss name is Clive Davis. Clive run him, Diddy don't run himself. So of course, all this talk about, you know, Diddy has led to people talking about Clive. Clive, it's strange to be honest that 70 year old music mogul Clive Davis came out as B. However, everyone is wondering if Diddy was the one who encouraged Clive to come out of the closet so he wouldn't be held accountable. 
After all, it's not often that someone at Clive's age comes out, especially in Hollywood. Y'all want me to talk about Clive Davis? Okay, let's do it. But I'm telling y'all right now, this story already took a turn that I was not expecting. So Clive Davis is over Arista, which is over Diddy's Bad Boy Records. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records came out. And I did find that I could be attracted uh, to a man while I still am very attracted to a woman. Boss too, and his boss name is Clive Davis. Clive run him. Diddy don't run himself. Power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored about. by Clyde. Now in the book, you reveal to the world for the first time about your bisexuality. Is there a reason you've decided to do that now? Did you feel that maybe in the past there may have been repercussions? By I wasn't f until my second marriage failed. I was a total st straight heterosexual, married twice, four children, um, and totally attracted to women. And had the, the, ne neither of my two marriages failed for the reason of so it was really only after the second, my second marriage failed that I opened myself up to the person and not the gender. And so the only time I really could talk about it was really if, and when I wrote my autobiography. I mean, it's my family I, I certainly spoke to and, and my close friends do, but you don't wear that on your sleeve. Oh, I must say, since my book has come out, I really feel some gratification that the subject of bisexuality is not understood well, and people feel you're either gay, you're straight, or you're lying, and it's just not true. And yeah. so if this could shed light more, if it could help move society a little bit further to the truth and the reality that there are a number of people that can be and are attracted to both genders and they're really attracted to the person and not the gender. Just the way Clive Davis said, oh, I could be attracted to a man and a woman. That was, I go like, that was that kind of, that took me out. I was like, this guy, bro, this guy. Yo, that, that took me out the way he said that. He said that so nonchalantly, like it was so natural. Yo, uh, this guy, bro, this guy. Yeah, this is who Diddy is around, bro. This is this is who endorsed um Bad Boy Records. He um he funded the label. You know what I mean? So you know Diddy had to you know Diddy had to do what it takes <laughs> to get that funding, right? This is just what it comes down to in the industry. You know what I mean? This is no surprise to people who have been enlightened to this stuff. Clive has acknowledged that his partner accompanies him to events and travels with him. He has declined to disclose his name. Nevertheless, it has become increasingly apparent that Diddy is the artist most frequently seen by Clive's side at events. Merely attending the same events may not be definitive proof, but the fact that both Clive and Diddy are openly gay and frequently seen together at social gatherings strongly suggests that there is a significant connection between them. The close bond between Diddy and Clive has been well established over the years. During this time, Clive has been in a committed relationship with a man, while Diddy has faced accusations of being closeted. Given these circumstances, the possibility of a romantic connection between the two is quite plausible. Furthermore, Clive has been open about his s**tity and relationships, yet he has never denied these rumors, further strengthening their validity. Diddy has remained silent on the matter as well. Diddy crossed paths with Clive when he was a 23-year-old aspiring artist looking to break into the cutthroat music industry. However, his hip-hop concepts managed to impress the legendary Clive, who was searching for a performer who could truly connect with the public. Clive has spoken about their initial encounter, stating that he found precisely what he was seeking in Diddy. Puffy was 23 years old and I knew the artist that I had, Aretha, Dion, Whitney, was one kind of music. Davis says, Lampface ushered in blue-collared R&B at its height, but, sensing the hip-hop revolution, 
Both Lan and I agreed that we could use someone really attuned to the street. You gotta know what you can do for yourself, and you gotta know when you need to look to other people. During that period, Diddy was employed under Andre Hall at Uptown Records. However, meeting Clyde Davis proved to be a pivotal moment in his career as he was able to make a lasting impression on the music mogul with his words, as Clyde himself recounts. When I met with Puffy, he articulated that hip-hop should be part of the top 40 mainstream and that the business would change in the future. And I said, what have you got to illustrate that point? And he played me Craig Max Blob it in your ear and he played me the then unknown artist that he felt and believed so strongly. He played me four or five cuts from Notorious B.I.G. Diddy's words were compelling enough to persuade Clyde, who promptly informed him that he had effectively conveyed his vision. I said, okay, you proved your point. That's when I introduced him to the weekly, what we called singles meetings. I introduced him to an executive there as someone who would help lead us to the street and share in the forthcoming hip hop revolution. While Diddy's swift rise to stardom may appear to have been the result of a straightforward exchange with Clyde, the reality is far from what Clyde has presented over the years. As it turns out, this encounter served as a facade for Clyde's pursuit of relationships with men, and Diddy was not the only person he engaged in such behavior with. It has been demonstrated that Clive has engaged with promising young artists, making assurances of a prosperous career in the music industry before getting romantically involved with them. Diddy appears to have avoided being cast aside after his relationship with Clive, as Clive provided him with assistance in launching his own record label, Bad Boy Records, and continued to support it for a number of years. Although Clive has been candid about his sex, Diddy has not addressed the matter himself. You know, discovery of yourself and your bisexuality, and that was something that, you know, you had never discussed publicly before. And, you know, it was uh, an important part of the book and it made a big impact. I wonder if you could, you know, say a little bit about, you know, we've heard so many stories just here tonight. You know, the book very easily could just have been exclusively devoted to music and really had nothing about your personal life in it. Well, you know, what was it? that uh, made you feel that it was important uh, you know, to share elements of your background from Brooklyn right up into you know, the nature of your s All right, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll do that. And, <laughs> but I do want to say, because somehow in the conversation I had earlier this evening, it became relevant to point out that other than you, Anthony, who, with whom I collaborated with and not for this book from the very beginning. The publisher knew nothing about this. This was not in the treatment. This was not in the presentation. Um, it was very specifically not in the proposal to sell the book. It was not in the proposal. You so know, that nobody was, who bid on this book. The editor of the book had no idea that it would be in there. No, it, it, this was not trying to get a subject that would make a book sell better. It was none of that. And when you read the book, you'll see it dealt with in the very last chapter. I knew from the beginning, as I expressed to you at the very beginning, that if I was going to write a book on my life, that there's no question I was going to deal with the subject. Um, it was nothing you and I discussed. It was a chapter that I had to write myself. And I really wrote it last summer on a boat, a trip that I take with my family, because certainly my prime role in life has been my children. I have four, my grandchildren, I have six. And I wrote that part of the last chapter and read it to my four offspring. We were on the boat together. Um, and I've always had total love and support and understanding that after my second marriage failed, because I had been 100% heterosexual up until that point, that I opened myself up after the failure of my second marriage, having read something about my my story was different. I just found that I would open myself up to the possibility of a relationship based on the person and not on, ge in ge on gender. Hold on, where did the entire allegation about Clive Davis and his gay behavior originate? Gene Deal may have an explanation for that. His name Twan, he's from our neighborhood. He, he was married to uh, Tanisha Arnold. So the broad played Pam on uh, Martin Lawrence. We went to the party with her. I mean, 
It was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Pippa Capaz, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, and, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Biblical Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with the big old booty and shit. No, he was gay and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen it here that, matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold. You know what I'm saying? In her brand new 560, black one. Yeah, 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 that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there. Together, it was there. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs. You know what I'm saying? They even got pictures of them. He got on that uh uh that blue sweater with the turtleneck. Him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Have you ever seen that picture? No, I don't recall. But I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there, that they was at that party that day. Yeah, that's just like a bunch of weird shit, that whole fucking, yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, bunch of, uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not no gay bastard or nothing. I mean, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird though, without. Yeah, and it was J.D. Pickett, but. You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh, that shit wasn't really tolerated with my generation, you know what I'm saying? What is it about Clyde Davis's recent autobiography that has Diddy so fired up? The streets say it's piping hot and Diddy is usually pretty private about his personal life. So for Clyde Davis to just put it all out there like that, well, it's on now, Diddy is on the warpath and ready to give Clyde Davis a piece of his mind. This is going to be a show of epic proportions. Hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was kind of fishy, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy. You know, but it's more, you know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost. Tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, ooh, you don't need to have fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost's homies still on my big homie. But he didn't know that he was around, uh, it was maybe about 20 of us. So we, the dude that uh, socked my big homie, we beat the dog shit out of him. So my big homie, he came too. He, uh, he like, that's the motherfucker? We like, yeah. And it was two security guards had him. Had, uh, had the dude that we beat up from Kid Frost entourage. So uh, my big homie knocked that motherfucker out while the yellow jack, you know, the yellow jackets with the event security, they had to do. So my homie still knocking him out. Boom! So the, the dude with the uh, yellow jacket was talking shit. Man, what the fuck is wrong with My homeboy knocked out him too. Bam! Like, ooh! So the other one like, man, he got back. Little Jamaican dude come up talking shit. Man, are you going crazy? My homeboy sock him too. So we went down to get our car for valet. And it was the dude, it's LBC. And he like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, it's Long Beach City Crip. So my homeboy knew this dude was an imposter. He, if you from Long Beach, you gonna say Rolling Twenties or Insane. You know what I'm saying? You gonna say, you're a real uh, block boy. You know what I'm saying? 
19th Street. You gonna say something. A real crib shit. This nigga say he's from Long Beach City Crip. All the way like, wait a minute. And knocked him out too. So uh one G them was down there, him and said to the police waiting on their cars. And they I get they seen my homeboy get busy like that. So they so uh, they had left before us, went up to Fat Burgers. So we came, got in our shit, they finally brought our cars to ballet. We went up to Fat Burgers. And one of the years, so Cedric Tabalas was up there already. You know, eating their shit and shit. So we came in there, the big homie like, uh, hey, motherfucker. He pointed at Cedric Tabalas, like, man, you been dumping us for years, mother. I'm losing all my motherfucking money betting on your motherfucking ass. So uh, Warren G was right there. He like, my homie like, man, that's a nice ass watch. So uh, he like, uh, man, let me try that on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, by then, uh, my homeboy, somebody got my homeboy attention. And he turned his head. Shit, Cedric Zabalas and what's his name was in the, uh, he was in the rag top 500. Benz, this motherfucker like jumped off. I mean, he he drove up off the motherfucker. He didn't even pay attention to the curve. He jumped off of the curve instead of using the uh, you know, the driveway. That shit was funny, but my homeboy like, damn, he almost bust his whole fucking engine block. Yeah, that's that that shit was funny as a motherfucker. Like, damn, yeah. Although I'm not really sure, I've heard that Clive Davis made some rather ridiculous allegations about Diddy behind closed doors. Diddy has always been very private about keeping his personal life private, so for Clive Davis to just wear off his dirty laundry like that is a major betrayal of trust. These two have known each other for decades and Diddy probably thought he could rely on Clive Davis to keep his secret safe. However, it appears that all of them are not as trustworthy as they once were are off now. Since Diddy has built his entire brand around being this untouchable larger than life figure, the revelations in Clive Davis's book are especially damaging because they have the potential to seriously harm his reputation. In addition, some of the allegations are downright controversial. If people start to see Titty as just another messy celebrity with a lot of drama, it could seriously harm his career. I won't go into too much detail, but let's just say that Diddy will have a lot of explaining to do and there will be a lot of buzz in the streets if even half of what Clive Davis is saying is accurate. Next thing you know, um, she's dead. Ray J was the last person to see her alive. He let the dealer in, but she was sober, right? But he let the dealer in that gave her the shot. Leola has said, Leola Brown, Bobby Brown's sister, has said on several occasions that her she was beat. They saw her body. She didn't just die in a tub, like she was beat up. Real life. If you were to see, they have a new biopic with Whitney Houston coming out. I don't. If if they play this movie and you see no kind of drugs in this movie, do you feel like it's an injustice to what this look? I feel like anything was. with her name on it is strictly for the purposes of financial gain for those who have access to her estate, including Clive Davis. Including Clive, Clive Davis. Clive Davis. This ain't a film to celebrate Whitney Houston. This is a film to, uh, you know, pay the, pay, the, pay the pipe. He was the one trying to bring her back, though, at the time of, prior to her death, right? Fuck it, him. Uh, he needed her back. Oh, yeah. He needed her back, but he needed her back and under his control. Mm. You want to know what fucking Clive Davis did for Whitney Houston? Why he was busy trying to bring her back. See, people forget before she came to the United States, he sent her on an international tour. Mm. And she went out on tour and she was still getting high at the time. Uh, you know, let's see. What happens if I put in Whitney Houston? Kazakhstan. Mm. That's what she was going to You got a Kazakhstan? Oh, man. This was not long before she passed away. I 
I think I know what you Oh, here's the full concert. She only did four songs. Yeah, I think I know what you I think I remember The Voice. Huh? Yeah, I remember you I, with The Voice. I know you're about to go with this. I think I remember this. Not just The Voice. Just everything. The whole show. <laughs> Ouch. Straight to yeah, the moment. Yeah, 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 it's a, yeah, I see that. It's definitely a, It'll a, make you cry if you really love music and if you really love Whitney Houston. And then after a couple of joints, you will find it hilarious. Mm. Because, not because you're happy that she's falling apart, it's just- Given that Clyde Davis went too far in publicizing Diddy's business, it makes sense that Diddy is ready to fight back. The question at hand is how Diddy will handle this would he attempt to play it downplayed or escalate things. Diddy nevertheless reportedly addressed Clive Davis personally about the startling disclosures in his book. Can you picture being in the room for that emotional conversation? One thing is for sure, though Diddy won't allow Clive Davis get away with this without a battle. He's doing the crackhead antics so dope, you know what I mean? It was, she was in it. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Nigga, what? Nigga, what is my key, bitch? Uh, like she's uh, in front of the president of Kazakhstan. Oh my god. Oh my god. But it was good enough to get that check though. And then he put her in rehab to clean her up. Right before it came time for America, because she had to at least appear sober in America for the whirlwind story. And then they, then they, they brought in R. Kelly to do that song. The pedophile. that she had to use auto-tune to sing because her lungs were so jacked up from all the smoking. And, you know, a lot of people didn't know she was a heavy smoker. She was a chain smoker. She smoked three packs in Newport today and still could sing like that. But when you add in the cocaine or the crack, and then the this and the that, and then the when they did her autopsy, they said there was nothing wrong with her throat. She, her lungs were so damaged that she couldn't fuel the notes. It was her lungs. It wasn't, her voice was fine. Oh. That's, that's, how, that's how Clive did it. And then the next thing you know, she's fucking Ray J. And yeah, then yeah, it's Grammy happened. time. And her and Clive had a fight two days before. And from what I was told, Bobby Christina was present for some of that fight. And then the next thing you know, um, she's dead. Ray J was the last person to see her alive. He let the drug dealer in, but she was sober, right? But he let the drug dealer in that gave her the shot. Leola has said, Leola Brown, Bobby Brown's sister, has said on several occasions that her, she was beaten. They saw her body. She didn't just die in a tub, like she was beat up. And Brandy was the one that found her. But you know, they they pledge allegiance to yeah. Clive too. Jeez. Well, you know, Ray J was kind of down on his luck because the whole bullshit had happened. And then, you know, Whitney was dead and he was using her as he's said himself for clout and then all of a sudden he got love and hip hop. LA after Whitney died and then they inappropriately put her stupid ass goddaughter on there. Uh, you know, I, so, I just thought it was all kind of cheesy. Um, yeah, so now I probably won't be watching the movie just because I know whose money the proceeds are going to and fuck him. Mm. Fuck you royally and fuck you for inventing Diddy. Ugh. Fuck you for that. Fuck you for letting that out of control, whack ass fucking whoremonger and sodomite just run rampant all over this goddamn fucking business. Fuck you for that. Like Andre, Andre was different. Andre had class. Andre had, had some integrity. No, you 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 go to get the little Chucky doll. 
Though Diddy has always been one to voice his opinions, from what I've been told, he didn't hold back and told Clive Davis exactly how he felt about having his private life exposed in such a way. Diddy also didn't just keep things behind closed doors, instead he made sure that everyone knew that he was furious. Diddy vented his frustrations on social media and let's just say that he wasn't kind in a number of tweets. Diddy scolded Clive Davis for betraying his trust and sharing his trade secrets. He even hinted that producing Muddy Beer could have legal ramifications. Jack, Jack, what did you think about uh, Cameron's CNN interview? I didn't watch it. He's, I'm not watching. I'm, I'm literally like, for real, I'm, I'm boycott tree. I'm just skipping it. Keep on going, keep on going. I'm just being honest. Let, let me ask, Jack, if, if you what felt you that he didn't say nothing. <laughs> he promoted, he promoted, yeah, he promoted some type of, uh, uh, what was it, Rook? Uh, he promoted um, some type of sex stimulant and said, yeah, why do y'all have me on here to talk about it? he wearing this time? Yeah, he said, why y'all got me out here talking about Diddy? I don't know that, man. And, you know, he don't know her. Hey, he copped. Hey, he copped out. Since when? Him and Mario spent a lot of time together on Star Island at Diddy's. <laughs> what you think? I don't remember you, camera. On Ocean Drive in your bright pink stretch shit. And Mario dripping on them yellow diamonds, looking like some kind of wild canary. You, you don't know him? That's bad. You know him about as good as the game know him. And the game know him well. Freak off much. Okay, you don't know him. Anyway, what was you saying? Hey, let me ask you, Jack. Which, one, which location... <laughs> Which location you feel holds darker secrets? Uh, Epstein Island or Star Island? Equal. Equal. Same crowd, same activity. Yeah. It's an island still. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, it, I, I, I've been seeing plenty of strange shit on Star Island. <laughs> More than I care to remember. Some shit, I wish there's some shit I wish I could. He was able to steer the story by going straight after Clive Davis and posting an official statement on the internet. It's evident that Diddy feels deeply betrayed by someone he once considered a friend and mentor. Diddy wasn't going to stand by and let Clive Davis ruin his reputation without a fight. His tongue was sharp and unapologetic. Instead, he came out swinging, ready to defend himself against the allegations in Clive Davis's book. If all of that wasn't enough, Jaguar Wright has also been leaking some serious information. She says that Clive Davis is far worse than Diddy, portraying him as the true antagonist in the conflict surrounding the music business. In the comments section below, please share your thoughts on whether or not Clive and Diddy ever dated. If you like the video, please click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss any future ones. Until then, family, keep it real.